Well, good day and welcome to our mission status briefing for today from the Johnson Space Center. Atlantis is uh, on its own and the hours are winding down toward landing and with us to talk about this after his final shift as a space shuttle flight director is the lead for this mission from the space shuttle side, Quatsi Alaburujo. Quatsi. Thank you, Rob. Well, the crew flew an absolutely perfect uh, undocking and fly around today. Uh, undocking occurred on time. Uh, the space shuttle Atlantis uh, backed out to about 600 feet. And while they were at 600 feet, the ISS performed a, a 90 degree uh, yaw maneuver or uh, essentially a, a 90 degree right turn to present uh, its off axis to, uh, to the shuttle. Uh, then uh, pilot Doug Hurley uh, initiated a half lap fly around, flew it absolutely perfectly. Uh, everything was by the numbers. And uh, after that half lap fly around, uh, when the, uh, the shuttle was on the, the backside of the space station, uh, the uh, shuttle crew initiated uh, two separation burns, which basically took the shuttle on a trajectory uh, away from and underneath the ISS. Uh, at this point, the shuttle crew is now engaged in uh, late inspection activities. Uh, they've got the orbiter boom sensor system engaged to uh, inspect the TPS, uh, the thermal protection system, for any damage that may have occurred uh, while the uh, shuttle was docked to ISS. And once they conclude those activities, then uh, the crew will hopefully be getting to bed on time, if not a little early today, if we get lucky. And they'll be preparing for their uh, entry minus one day activities tomorrow, which includes check out of their flight control system, check out of their comm system, uh, as well as uh, stowing the cabin in preparation for entry. So a uh, fantastic day. Uh, everything went very well today and uh, certainly couldn't be happier with uh, the performance of the crew, performance of the spacecraft, uh, or the performance of the flight control teams. Uh, just very pleased with the mission overall. And uh, so we're looking forward to uh, a good entry and landing on, on Thursday if uh, weather holds out for us. That's all I've got and I'd be happy to answer questions. Okay, we've got uh, reporters here in Houston, also reporters on the phone bridge and we can start, uh, Mark. Uh, thanks, uh, Mark Corot for Aviation Week. And I just wonder, um, as far as the photo session went, and as best you know, did did the crew get get imagery for the station program? Uh, we haven't gotten any indications to the contrary. Typically, uh, we really uh, don't get a whole lot of feedback from the crew directly on the photos they shoot during fly around. However. I expect those image cards will be in the uh, in the laptop computers and and will be downlinked uh, with with all due alacrity. So we should probably start to see some of those images uh, by tonight local time. Joe, Philip Sloss with NASASpaceflight.com. Um, now that your uh, last uh, shift is over as a shuttle flight director and your flight control team, um, were you guys able to savor the moment today? Uh, this being your last shift. I think we were uh, in that I think we thoroughly enjoyed uh, helping to guide Atlantis' crew through their activities. Um, I didn't particularly make any, any speeches today. Uh, we uh, really just focused on, on the undocking, on the fly around, making sure that we uh, executed those properly. We were able to enjoy tremendous imagery uh, in real time. Uh, in fact, there was uh, one period of time where we were looking at uh, a view of the International Space Station as it was doing its maneuver, uh, downlinked in real time from uh, Atlantis's um, uh, centerline camera on the docking system. Concurrently, Atla uh, the International Space Station had a camera pointed at Atlantis as it was flying uh, over the top, and we got that view uh, uh, down simultaneously. So that was uh, that that created a nice atmosphere and mission control that we could enjoy and and. and used to, to savor the moment. So uh, I think I think everyone enjoyed themselves today. Uh, I think we were happy with how we executed and, and really that I think is the most important thing to this team. Go ahead, Robert. Robert Perlman with collectspace.com. Uh, before they left the station yesterday, the, the crew during their farewell ceremony uh, showed a shuttle model as sort of their monument to the space shuttle program and mentioned that your signature was on there as one of the modern titans of the space shuttle program. Can you tell me what that meant to you personally to be part of that that tribute and um, what you see that shuttle model representing aboard the space station? Well, I 
I barely have words to describe uh, how humbling, how humbled I feel uh, to have, have been allowed to, to sign the model. Uh, that, that model will live on the space station uh, for the foreseeable future as a, as a reminder of the contributions of the shuttle program and, and the role that the shuttle has played in, in building the International Space Station. Uh, I was just uh, talking with the chief of the flight director office this morning uh, when he asked me, did I ever imagine that I would be uh, the lead flight director for the last shuttle flight? And, uh, and, and of course, the answer was, was no. Uh, as, as most folks know, I, I started my career as an ISS flight controller, um, first uh, supporting ISS as a flight director, and uh, initially had, had not really imagined that, that I would have the, uh, the opportunity uh, to, uh, to train shuttle and to, uh, to learn and, and manage operations on that spacecraft as well. So uh, it's really, I, I consider it quite an honor. Uh, I, I certainly, uh, uh, certainly appreciate and recognize the contributions of those team members who have, uh, who have uh, worked for me and with me over the years, because uh, they're the ones that really make me, make me look smart. Uh, I, I like to joke frequently, and it's not that much of a joke, that, that my team is been so good that I rarely have to, to do much beyond just nod and point. Uh, so um, it's, uh, it's, it's, really, it's really an honor quite, quite beyond uh, too many meaningful words, and uh, it's, it sort of leaves you, uh, sort of leaves you uh, a bit uh, sad to see the, the program come to an end, but at the same time, uh, transitions are important, and so uh, uh, I'm just honored to have been part of this particular transition. Gina. Uh, Gina Sinceri, ABC News. I think there's a good viewing opportunity tomorrow morning. You're going to head outside and look at Atlantis and the station fly overhead? You know, I am very tempted to do so, but uh, I think I, 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 owe, uh, I owe my wife and my son to, uh, to actually be asleep at that time. And so uh, I, now, that, now that my role in this shuttle flight is concluded, uh, I do have several debts to start to pay up on. We have a couple of reporters on the phone bridge that we can go to before we come back here for follow-ups. Bill Harwood. Bill, can you hear us? All right, let's move along. Marsha Dunn, you there? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Um, hey, hi, it's oh. me. Can you oh. hear me, Rob? Yeah, we can hear you, Bill. Uh, loud and clear. Um, Quatsi, just, just a quick one for me. It's just kind of a thinking about mission control on landing day. I know that folks are all going to be in there. It's going to be quite a moment uh, for all the folks in mission control. Just wondering if you can give me some sense of, I don't know what to even, uh, what to even ask here, but, but the emotions involved, I mean, where you guys are after all of this and to be there on landing day. Uh, any thoughts you might have? Thanks. Well, indications that, that I have uh, now just from uh, uh, anecdotal reports or, uh, or my personal observations, I think the level of emotion uh, that will be felt in mission control uh, will be building geometrically between now and, and landing day. Uh, I know several of the managers, uh, you know, program managers, the institutional managers, many of whom are, are ex-mission controllers themselves or ex-flight directors. Uh, I know they are, are planning to be in the control center, uh, some cases uh, to be on the floor of the, uh, the front room uh, during landing. So uh, I think the, the, the sense of wanting to be a part of that moment uh, is very strong and is going to be building. Uh, I know I myself will, will likely be in the, uh, the viewing room of the, the white flight control room, white Ficker, it's the shuttle flight control room. I'll be there with uh, with my wife and and some friends, uh, and possibly our, uh, our our son, and um, I know that that I will feel a sense of completion, uh, a very palpable sense of completion, as well as uh, a touch of sadness and 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 just a reflective reverence of of, uh, of of what we've been able to accomplish uh, over these last uh, several years. So I, I think. Many people who will be there will be feeling the same thing. I think there'll uh, be some understandable uh, mix of, of apprehension, sadness, and excitement at what the future might hold. Uh, all of those emotions wrapped up into one. 
so uh, I think we'll see all of that. Okay, uh, Marsha, you there? Yes, hi, can you hear me? Yeah, sure can. Yes, um, Quatsi, it, it seemed uh, pretty moving to listen to Steve Robinson sign off to the um, sign off for the entire team. And I'm, I'm wondering if that seemed to be the, the, the peak of the emotion in the room during your shift. And also, did you, as Chris Ferguson suggested, turn around and make a memory as you walked out of that room? Well, uh, one of the reasons that, that I, didn't, I didn't attempt to, to make a speech today uh, to my team as we left is uh, because I think the, the words of, of Steve Robinson uh, were, uh, were powerful. Uh, they were simple and, and brief. Uh, I think he, he very accurately represented how uh, my team felt. Uh, as we were marching out of the control center, uh, I, I saw a group of people on my team who believed in their heart of hearts that they have worked hard, that they have flown a good mission and that they've done their jobs uh, to the best of their ability. And, and, and I believe that they have. Uh, I think they have earned that sensation, earned that emotion. Uh, as for me, uh, I, did, uh, I did definitely uh, turn around and, and, and make a memory, uh, turned around a couple of times. Uh, I've spent many, many, many hours and many nights, many days in the control center, uh, not just as a shuttle flight director or uh, uh, someone supporting the shuttle program, but uh, as part of the ISS program, uh, the control center has has uh, has been home for uh, for a long time. So it was uh, it was definitely a powerful moment as uh, as I, I walked out today. Uh, but um, but at the same time, I, I I've learned to make myself comfortable with my various discomforts uh, at ending the program, uh, uncertainty that. Uh, as to what the future might hold, uh, I try to look at that as an adventure. So uh, rather than focusing too much on the memories, I personally uh, am, am focusing on uh, my excitement uh, at, at what the future might hold. Thank you. OK, any follow-ups here? All right, seeing none. Oh, Robert, one just snuck it in there. Rob Perlman with CollectSpace.com again. Um, Mike Leinbach commented after the launch that uh, that would be the last time that his team would be together in, in one place. Is that, the, is that true for your team as well, or do you have plans to have a follow-up meeting um, either with the crew or, or after this mission lands? I think, uh, I think it's safe to say our shift today will, will most likely be uh, the second to last time uh, that, uh, that my whole team is together in one place. Uh, we do have... Uh, a time-honored tradition of, uh, of hanging the plaque. As you know, uh, every mission, we have uh, a plaque that uh, is made in the image of, of the crew patch for the flight, and uh, it is awarded by the lead flight director to the uh, controller or the disciplines that, uh, that contributed most uh, significantly to, uh, to mission success and our evaluation. And so that's, uh, that's a ceremony that, that, that will occur next week that uh, almost everybody uh, comes to all of the, the controllers, not only the ones who supported the mission, but all of the ones uh, who uh, were back in the office rooting for them and, uh, and thinking good thoughts and helping to make the mission a success. So we'll see everyone again uh, in the, uh, the shuttle flight control room for the plaque hanging ceremony uh, next week. And that'll probably be the last time that we're all together as, as one group. Mark. Uh, thanks, uh, Mark Corot for Aviation uh, Week again. Had a couple of questions. Could you uh, just go over the GNC uh, assignments for the rest of the mission and whether there's been any change today? And uh, could you also touch on the cryo margins at this point? Okay. And when you say GNC assignments, I assume you're talking about computers? Yes, sir. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, when, we, when we undocked and, and uh, conducted the fly around, we were in our standard um, triple GNC computer configuration. GPCs 1, 2, and 3 were in the redundant set uh, computing GNC software. Uh, GPC 4 was our systems management machine, and GPC 5, which contains our backup flight software, uh, that was still in standby mode as it has been since uh, we arrived on orbit. For the remainder of the, uh, the mission, uh, GPC 1 will, uh, will be our GNC computer. GPCs 2 and 3 will remain asleep. Uh, GPC 4, of course, will continue to run the 
systems management software until entry day when we bring up all of the computers and have g p c s one through five all supporting flight critical buses in preparation for the orbit landing and there was another question you asked me i think about cryo margins as of today i think we were sitting on right around fourteen hours above our thirteen day mission okay any other questions all right, I guess not. Uh, we'll close with a couple of programming notes. One more briefing on TAP today. That'll be at 12 noon Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, following the mission management team meeting. The uh, chair of the mission management team, Leroy Kane, the deputy shuttle program manager, will be here uh, to discuss those discussions, and he'll be joined by Mike Suffordini, the ISS program manager, to talk about the space station in the wake of this final shuttle mission to the complex. Atlantis's crew sleep begins at 12.59 p.m. Central Time. One minute later, the STS-135 ascent imagery highlights compiled by the Space Shuttle program will be aired on NASA TV. And if you haven't seen those in the past, you don't want to miss these. There won't be a dry eye in the house. I can almost promise you that. So you'll want to watch that. They'll be replaced throughout the course of the day with that. Our flight day highlights air for the first time at 2 p.m. Central Time. They'll be replayed in the absence of other programming on the top of the hour, every hour through the crew sleep period. Atlantis's crew will wake up to begin flight day 13 at 8.59 p.m. Central Time tonight. And when they wake up, they'll be under the guidance of the entry team, led by Entry Flight Director Tony Sakachi, who will be here at this time tomorrow morning to discuss Atlantis's final landing. You can follow all of the activities of Atlantis and the International Space Station on our website at www.nasa.gov. For now, we'll call it a briefing. We'll see you at 12 noon. Take care.